Welcome back to the Boat Boss. We are here with the president of the National Marine Manufacturers Association, Sarah Angel. Welcome to the Boat Boss. Thank you, Kim. It's great to be here with you. Well, thank you for coming on, on the show with such short notice. I know there's a hot topic brewing out there in the marine industry, and we have to do as much as we can to get the word out. But before we talk about the proposed luxury tax, tell me what is the NMMA and what is its mission? Sure. I mean, we are here to ensure the growth and success of the recreational boating industry through market expan expansion and advocacy. So I focus on all of our efforts for Canada, and Frank Hugelmeyer is our president for NMMA in the U.S. So at the core of our existence is what can we do to ensure that U.S. manufacturers and Canadian manufacturers and Canadian dealers sell more product in the market, provide amazing experiences for boaters, and get more people into boating. That's at the core of everything we do. And with that comes a, a wide array of programs, Discover Boating, Export Promotion, our boat shows and certification, um, and all sorts of other support programs that we have. Well, what an outstanding organization. I've been in the marine industry for 22 years. I'm very, very familiar with it. And thank you for bringing everyone up to speed on how important, how very important the NMMA is to us here in America and in Canada. So how is boating in Canada? Is it as crazy as it is here? It really, really just took off. I think back in the early days of the pandemic starting and we were worried about how we were going to get marinas to even open up with the lockdowns that we were facing. And then all of a sudden on the other side of that, there was just this huge surge in interest in boating and people buying boats and entering through, you know, with a PWC, whatever they, they could get their hands on rea in reality. And one of the things that surprised me was in Canada, we have uh, something called a pleasure craft operator card. So everyone has to have one of those right. cards, like a license to operate a boat on the waterways. And we saw a 73% surge in people taking their pleasure craft card test within that first initial um, lockdown. And then the numbers just kept going and going. And 2021 was just off the charts as well. So huge interest. We've seen that all around the world in the US, you know, we're over 300,000 units uh, sold in 2021 and the, the rest of the world wow. is coming as well. So bad, bad news on the front end of the pandemic and lockdowns, but this has been a, a wonderful thing that's come out for the industry. I love it. I love how the world has fallen in love with boating again, especially in Canada, here in the States, even more so. So um, let's talk about what might change that. Obviously, there's a hot topic, like I said, brewing in the marine industry, and that's the proposed luxury tax. That's uh, obviously uh, a big discussion and up for vote this year, early 2022. Tell us about it. How long have you been working on this and what is it? Yes, yeah, so, it, you know, unfortunately, sometimes despite all of the advocacy efforts that we do at NMMA, there are times that government policies don't really align and they don't make a lot of sense. And I will say on the record to any of my, you know, government colleagues that I have to work with uh, on this file is that this is one of those instances. Unfortunately, what appears to be a very uh, important political topic has turned into to policy. So it started in October of 2019. Um, wow. When the government in power at the time put a, put their their mandate together for the election and proposed a luxury tax, so we have been fighting it since just before the pandemic and all through the pandemic. Wow. So it, it's it, despite all of the efforts to date, we have had some success in it. We've gone from uh, as a result of our advocacy efforts in early 2020, when this was finally reintroduced in the budget of uh, 2021. Boats went from $100,000 of taxation to two fifty, dollars but planes and automobiles stayed at 100000 So at the very least, we've saved a fair chunk of our industry by yes. our advocacy showing, you know, showing our, our government officials that a $100,000 boat is, is a middle class family going out fishing. It's not a luxury yacht. Yes, no, you're absolutely right. And, but there still is major, you know, ramifications. I read some, I read a the really interesting piece of information, and I've said it on my last few shows about this topic, is for a uh, half a million dollar purchase, it's $40,000 that actually impacts, positively impacts the local community. This might go away. This might hurt or will hurt. 
the local communities will hurt, obviously, a ripple effect for the trades. Can you share a little bit more on that and how you guys, how you feel this might affect the local economy in each one of the precincts? Absolutely. You know, to build on Bill Yerkin's comments on this as well, it's exactly as you say, every boat has a huge um, economic spinoff. So I, I've often said to to the government officials that, you know, one of our dealers points this out well, that someone who buys a luxury vehicle gets the keys, turns the car on, drives it off the lot and parks it in their garage and takes it out when they want. And maybe we'll do the odd thing to it. Of course, there's service. But a boat doesn't drive off the lot. It goes to a to it, first of all to prepare it at the dealership. Then there's the mooring and the service and the winterization and the fuel and all the components and all those people that work to keep that boat in in the economy. So as it's not about the the person who can afford the million dollar yacht. It's about the economic spinoff that that boat has to the local economy. And a lot of small coastal communities from you know, both coast and Canada that will be affected when that person who can't afford whatever they want at a million dollars says, no, I'm sorry, out of principle, I'm not paying another 10% or 20 on, on the lesser. And on top of that, there's tax on the tax, just to add insult to injury. So it is, a, you know, to your point, it's, it is 10, 10% every year that that is, is ripple in the economy. Well, I, you know, I read the statistic also that $90 million in revenue will be projected to be lost just at the dealer level, dealer level by itself. How will the manufacturers, I mean, what, is, what do you think will happen on the manufacturer side in Canada? Well, the manufacturing in Canada has suffered for a while. We used to have a much bigger base. Nowadays, you know, 85% of what is sold in Canada comes from the states. So that's concerning for our U.S. manufacturers as the yeah. first. But those that are still here, we have one company in, in uh, named Neptunus Yachts. They do hiring. They have their customers. And he's clearly stated, I will probably be wiped out if I lose 50% mm -hmm. of my sales in Canada. So there isn't a lot of Canadian manufacturing, but this will help to destroy what's left as well. What a powerful statement. I would love to have that person that um, one of the dealer principals or owners on on our show is that right there is exactly the message that we're trying to get out there so if any of you obviously um, listen to Sarah and I our message about this please share this on your platform get the word out that this is a serious issue and one that we must obviously not vote in major ramifications so how can we help besides sharing it on our networks what do you guys recommend do we donate what what can we do Sarah yeah, I mean, I think from the U.S. side of things, that what what is of great value and use is for continue to put pressure um, on Congress and Senate to lobby the Canadian officials, their counterparts. Yeah. You know, we've we've written to USTR uh, on trade that we are number one trading partners with each other. So to put a tax on a product that enters from the U.S. into Canada doesn't make any sense. So it almost is kind of. Um, slap in the face on US MCA um, when we shouldn't be doing that. That, well, that would be my opinion. <clears throat> the, the, the most important thing to do is to advocate from the US into Canada and our US boat manufacturers, please engage with your Canadian dealers, have them reach out to me, get them to do grassroots to their members of parliament, you know, bring me your ideas, your concerns, and eventually we want to survey all of the Canadian dealers on what the job losses will look like if this thing does go through. Well, if history repeats itself, which we hope does not happen, every luxury tax that has ever gone through in any country has always been repelled. Comment on that. Do you think that obviously the word will get out? Talk about how important it is that this is not passed. Yeah, I mean, that's the message we've given. And, and Bill Jurgen mentioned that as well. Every bit of research I've done shows that it's failed and it's been a net loss to government revenue. Um, Keyword, I'm afraid net loss. <laughs> I'm afraid for this government, it's it's fairly political. I say that with respect. We're happy to work with them to find other sources of revenue that might bring um, you know them more money instead of a, a loss. Um, mm -hmm. They don't feel that the 1990 experience in the U.S. will be what happens here today. So, in their view, history will not repeat. 
I don't see how that's going to happen, but we will definitely do our best, Sarah, and appreciate all that you and your team are doing at the NMMA. Um, I will share this on my platform, you on yours, and anyone else that's listening, we urge you to spread the word that we do not want this proposed 10% luxury tax. Sarah, I wish you only the best. And again, please let me know if I can help in any other way. And let's vote no on this. Thanks very much, Kim. It's been a pleasure to be here with you today. Likewise. Have an epic 2022. You too. Thanks again for all you do. Have a great day. Bye-bye.